The fact that this year's Civicus World Assembly is focusing on climate justice is exceptionally important. It is a recognition that the challenge of averting catastrophic climate change is not an environmental issue solely. It is an issue of peace and security, it's an issue of development, it's an issue of justice, it's an issue of gender. Why do we say this? When we look at the impacts that climate change is already having, where, for example, in 2008 it was documented that 300,000 people already have lost their lives as a result of climate impacts. And the sad reality is that the people that are facing the first and most brutal impacts of climate change are those that have been least responsible for it. Unless we are able to ensure that religious organizations, trade unions, and non-environmental focused development NGOs and so on get actively involved, we don't stand a chance to actually ensure that we can deliver to our children and grandchildren a safe and secure and sustainable life in the future. Uh, the message that I will bring to the Silicus Assembly is that time is running out, we drag our feet at the pedal, at our own pedal, that in fact this generation of leaders, including all of us, will be judged by our children and grandchildren as the generation that seriously failed them because the writing is clearly on the wall. The World Assembly happens at a very opportune time because it is in the run-up to the Durban negotiations in November, December, as well as shortly thereafter we will have the Rio Plus 20 meeting in uh, Brazil. Now, as a key convening space for civil society, the Civicus World Assembly does offer us an opportunity to look at how we can get greater synergy, how civil society can focus more on the overwhelmingly larger number of things where we agree and to respectfully disagree on the smaller uh, areas where we might have disagreement. Historically, when we looked at trade unions and environmental NGOs, people used to talk about red-green tensions. Today, the trade union movement is as committed to the challenge of climate change globally as environmental NGOs are. Why is it that in fact we have not changed from a dirty energy uh, addiction to a clean energy path? And I believe that the reason for that is in fact a fundamental undermining of democracy and disproportionate power being exercised by particularly the fossil fuel companies, oil, coal and gas companies and also the nuclear industry. Uh, and we have to put the spotlight on those that are holding back progressive legislation in the United States, in Australia, in various developed countries. Those that, for example, are now trying to kill the Kyoto Protocol. That is, where should our energy go in terms of um, trying to get the change that we need? So when we look at Durban, Durban will be a colossal failure if it is remembered as the burial ground of the Kyoto Protocol. We have to defend the, the Kyoto Protocol, ensure that developed countries that carry the greater burden of uh, the impacts of climate change are the ones that are taking leadership, providing the resources to help poor countries to adapt and mitigate to the challenges of climate change. Uh, and secondly, we have to make sure that it goes beyond simply saying we'll set up a green, green climate fund with no money in it. Right? which is what we did in Cancun. We need to ensure that the resources are available now to prevent catastrophe in poor countries who have not contributed to this problem. The third thing we need to ensure in Durban is that we get as close to a fair, ambitious and binding climate treaty. Sadly, many people will say that real politic tells us that in fact the politics is not right to get that treaty. But bear in mind that in Copenhagen two years ago, the whole world believed that that was a deliverable, that we had to deliver it in Copenhagen. And if we had to deliver it two years ago, surely we should be saying that we must deliver it now. So Durban, hopefully, will be more of a destination where we make some ambitious, bold decisions about how we move forward, rather than yet another endless stop in circular negotiations that go on and on. And I think the Civicus World Assembly can contribute 
consensus, uh, strategy, ideas of how in the remaining time before the Durban COP we can actually accelerate progress as close as possible to moving us in the direction of a fair, ambitious and legally binding climate treaty.